Hello, and welcome to Backer Breaks It Down. In today's video, we continue to study the short run behavior of polynomials with a focus on writing polynomial functions. So if I give you the graph of a polynomial function, can you write me a function formula? Well, I think you can. So let's talk about how we would do that. All right, so this function right here, um, it can be represented by the formula negative 0 0.025 times the quantity x plus 3 times the quantity x plus 1 squared times the quantity x minus 3 cubed. Okay, um, so let's talk about these factors because like we've worked with intercept form of a polynomial before. So this x plus 3, okay, that's referring to this x-intercept right here, okay? So x plus 3 tells me that I have an x-intercept at negative 3. And I also know that the, like, the multiplicity is 1, right? And so I know like an odd multiplicity means it's going to cross the x-axis. And that's exactly what it's doing at negative 3. Looking at our next factor, we have x plus 1 quantity squared, right? So x plus 1 tells me that I have an x-intercept at negative 1. And the multiplicity is 2. And so, like, I know that when it has a multiplicity of 2, that it's simply going to touch the x-axis and bounce off. And then lastly, we have the factor x minus 3 cubed, and that corresponds to this one right here, okay? And what we can see is that um, the intercept itself is 3 and it has a multiplicity of 3. And we know that odd multiplicities cross the x-axis, and it is crossing the x-axis. Um, but I want you to look at how it's crossing here, okay, versus how it's crossing over here. Sorry, that was supposed to be a highlighter. Okay. So when the multiplicity is one, it crosses like a line, right? For a multiplicity of one. When the multiplicity is three, it's crossing like a curve. I mean, if you think about the function x cubed, isn't that what it looks like? Yeah, okay. So like, we already know that each of our like factors can be written x minus a number and that number is the y-intercept and we know the multiplicity tells us exactly what's happening at the x-axis um, so when we go to write a function for a graph we are going to think about those things what is the x-intercept and then what is the multiplicity okay because if it's crossing we're going to be like, um, sh is it crossing like a line or is it crossing like a curve? Because if it's crossing like a line, then my multiplicity will just be one. But if it's crossing like a curve, my multiplicity is going to be three. And we're not going to go beyond that when it comes to crossing. Um, and then when it's touching, we're just going to use a multiplicity of two each time to keep it simple. Okay. And so like the first step is to write out a linear factorization. So you're going to determine the zeros or the x-intercepts of the function. You are going to think about multiplicity. So if it's like touching and bouncing off the x-axis, it's going to have a multiplicity of two. If it's crossing, it's going to be odd. We just need to be like, is it crossing multiplicity three like a curve or multiplicity one like a line, right? And we're going to write out a linear factorization. So check this out. We have y equals a times the quantity x minus k, blah, blah, blah. Okay. You're probably wondering what a is. Like, what is a? We don't know what a is, but we're going to find it. And we're going to find the value of a by taking the coordinates of a given point or the y-intercept. We're going to plug it in, and we're actually going to solve or a, we're gonna find a that way, okay? So we're gonna write out a linear factorization with a. We're gonna take a given point, plug it in for x and y, 
and we're going to solve for a. So let's like take a look at this. So find a possible formula for each polynomial whose graph is shown. So the first thing we have to do is we have to analyze our graph and we have to think like, what are the x-intercepts? What's the multiplicity and so on. So like looking here, I notice that I have an x-intercept at negative one. I notice that it's touching the x-axis and bouncing off. So for touching, we're gonna use a multiplicity of two. So that means my linear factor would be like x minus negative one, which would be x plus one. And then I, of course I'll square it, right? So then my next um, x-intercept is happening right here at two. And I notice that it's crossing and specifically it's crossing like a curve, which means the multiplicity is three. So the x-intercept is two. It's crossing like a curve, multiplicity three. So my linear factor will look like this, x minus two, the multiplicity of three. And then I've got this x-intercept here at four and it's crossing and it's going straight through like a line. So that would be a multiplicity of one. So the x-intercept itself is four, the multiplicity is one. So I would just write x minus four. Okay, but this is what I want to think about when I'm like, when my goal is to write a possible formula. So then I simply need to write out my linear factorization. So like I would have y equals a times the quantity x plus one squared times the quantity x minus two cubed times the quantity x minus four. So that's like this step here, write out that linear factorization. Um, now I need to find a point to use. Now they have like, they haven't like boldly identified a specific point to use. So I'm just gonna use the y-intercept and the y-intercept is zero, negative four. So that means x is zero, y is negative four, and I'm gonna plug that in, okay? So x is zero, I'll plug in zeros for all my x's, and then y is negative 4. Okay, now I know this is messy, but I have it nice and neat on the next page. See this right here, this mess? I'm going to type that into my calculator parentheses and all to figure out what that is, right? But I already did all this work because I'm, you know, proactive like that. Okay, um, so when I did those calculations, so remember, I plugged this into my calculator. I got 32. So now I have negative four equals a times 32. So I'm dividing both sides by 32 and I'm getting a is negative one eighth. And so then I just go and I write my function, but instead of there being an a there, negative one eighth has taken its place. Okay, so do me a favor, right? Pause this video right now, try number three. All right, so welcome back. So let's see how you did with number three. So you had an x-intercept at negative three, multiplicity of one, an x-intercept at two, multiplicity two, and an x-intercept of five, multiplicity one, All right? So this is what mine looked like. So at negative three, that's your x-intercept, the multiplicity is one, so our linear factor is x plus three. At two, we have a multiplicity of two since it's touching. Our linear factor is x minus two quantity squared. At five, we have a multiplicity of one because it's just crossing straight through and it's x minus five for our linear factor. Um, so I just want you guys to realize because I've had students in the past that are like, but it looks curvy going through five. Like it is still going straight through five. Like if they wanted us to like say, hey, that's a multiplicity of like three, it would have that like flattening shape. Okay, you would see it do that as it passed through like a curve. That's going straight through. There is nothing like curvy about it. Okay, still going through, straight through, hence a multiplicity of one. Okay, um, so we write out our linear factorization. We're using the y-intercept of zero, negative two. So plug in zero for x, negative two for y, calculate. Um, you end up with an equation of negative two equals a times negative 60, and a is one over 30. So this is what your linear factorization looks like, okay? 
All right, so what about one that doesn't have a graph? Okay, so f is a fourth degree polynomial with a double zero at x equals three. Okay, and then it says f of five equals zero. f of negative one also equals zero. And then f of zero equals three. So let's interpret what that's saying. So those first three pieces, like clearly this is a zero. And when they say double zero, they're talking about the multiplicity, right? So the linear factor would be like x minus three and then squared for that multiplicity. These two right here, they're saying f of x equals zero. And the function equals zero, they're talking about their x-intercepts. So they're saying one of our x-intercepts is five. They're only mentioning one of these. So x minus five is the linear factor. F of negative one is zero. So negative one is an x-intercept, multiplicity of one. So x plus one is the linear factor. And then that last piece, f of zero equals three. Well, this would correspond to the point zero, three. So that's the y-intercept of your function, not the x-intercept. And that's what you can use to find a. So x is zero and y is three. Um, so if we put all of this together and write out our linear factorization, we would have y equals a times the quantity x minus three squared times the quantity x minus five times the quantity x plus one. I'm plugging in zero for x and three for y. I'm simplifying on the right. So when I did all that math, I got negative 45. When I divide, I end up getting an a value of negative, 15, negative one over 15. And so that is my function. So writing a polynomial function formula given its graph is pretty easy to do. You simply need to determine what your x-intercepts are and like what their multiplicity is. Then you're going to write out your linear factorization using a. And then you'll plug in the coordinates of a given point or the y-intercept. And then you're going to find the value of a. And then finally, do remember to write your function formula. And that's how Backer breaks it down.